Hey everyone, Kavira here with my patch 7.2.5 Survival Hunter guide. Uh, in this guide, I'm going to be going mostly over the changes that Survival Hunters has received since the last patch. So, if you're looking for more of a guide on how to generally play Survival Hunter, uh, go ahead and click this little button that pops up on the top right corner of the video player here and come right back after you've watched that video because I'm not going to be going over everything about Survival Hunter in this one. It's mostly just going to be addressing what has changed with Hunters, uh, new gear, and what to expect for the new raid. Alright, so there's only been three major changes to Survival since the previous patch. The first one is that uh, Dragon's Fire Grenade, which is a talent on the second to last row, has been increased in, by 33%. And so uh, that begs the question, is Dragon's Fire Grenade worth to take now? And the short answer is no, it's still not good. Uh, butchery is pretty much better than Dragon's Fire Grenade in every way. And the loss on single target from Serpent Sting isn't worth it either. So there's still really no scenario where taking Dragon's Fire Grenade is a benefit. The other change is that Explosive Trap now has a damage radius of 8 yards, where it was previously 5 yards. Uh, this isn't really a major change in any way, just more of a quality of life thing. Uh, there's a number of bosses in Tomb of Sargeras where uh, there is a lot of AoE, but it's somewhat spread out. So this change is actually pretty awesome for the new raid tier and I'm glad they did it. And the final change was actually a change to Beastmaster Hunters that played over to Survival Hunters as well. Um, our ability Flanking Strike up until this time has always had a 20 yard range on our pets, meaning that if you tried to cast Flanking Strike and your pet was more than 20 yards away, the ability wouldn't cast, like you couldn't use it. Uh, flanking Strike uses the logic from Kill Command from Beast Mastery. And the change to Beast Mastery Hunters is that Kill Command now has a 40 yard range. And so that has translated over to Flanking Strike now having a 40 yard attack range. So it's a lot more convenient, especially if you're harpooning into your target your pet will now uh, be able to flanking strike as it's running to your target since they don't leap to the target with us when we harpoon. As a little example here, I have my pet stationed just a little under 40 yards away. Under the old flanking strike rules, my pet stationed here would not be able to use it. Um, he, he would just sit there and my ability would continue to fail to cast. So I'm going to use flanking strike here. And you see that the pet dash is all the way there, and the skill has already been used. And then I'll show you what it looks like when the pet is more than 40 yards away, just to give you an idea of what normally would happen under the old rules. So I hit Flanging Strike, and it fails. You keep kind of spamming it, nothing's happening as the pet's running to the target. And then once he's finally in range again, you can use it, and he just kind of dashes in there. The final major change wasn't actually a change to Survival Hunter itself, but a change to its tier set. So previously, the tier 19 two set bonus increased our Flinging Strike Mastery proc chance by three times. That was now nerfed to two times. And as you might have seen the little uh, opening I had to this video, um, this put Survival in actually a pretty bad place for two reasons. The main reason is that Survival's Hunter 4 set bonus from tier 19 was uh, approximately about 18% of its damage for that tier. So the reason, a large reason that Survival had gone from a very bad place in Emerald Nightmare and went to a very good place for the Nighthold is because uh, Survival got its 4 set bonus from there. Uh, this is just speculation, but I feel like Blizzard has balanced a lot of the classes around the set bonuses that they get, and a lot of the set bonuses for most DPS specs give between 10 to 15% damage bonus. And Survival was kind of ahead of that curve by getting 18 to like 22% bonus, depending on how well you could manage your mongoose bites. And because of this, it not only put Survival in a very good place, but made the set bonus extremely useful and then when this nerf came we saw this kind of huge drawback the nerf was so substantial that it brought survival basically to the last spot for the new tier um, it was so bad 
that for a little while, survival was actually dead last, being like mm, a solid 5% behind the next spec. And you're wondering, well, if they only nerfed the set a little bit, why did survival fall so far back? And the answer to that question is that the new tier 20 set bonuses really aren't that substantial compared to the previous bonus. And luckily, Blizzard has made up for this by hotfixing survival to just do 7% more damage. And that has pretty much put survival back in the place it was before. Although the new tier set, I have a big issue with it just because the damage bonus between it and the old set is still so much lower that it's pretty much not worth it to take the tier 20 set bonuses until you have at least like full heroic pieces for it. Like if you are wearing like full mythic tier 19 and you have full heroic tier 20, it's probably still a question of what slots you have because even the item level increase isn't enough to make up for that loss of damage from the set bonuses. Um, but all that said, let's go over talents for Tomb of Sargeras. So Tomb has basically two kinds of bosses, and there's, and uh, this is pretty much the same for every raid tier, but there's the single target bosses and the AoE bosses. So for single target, the build has remained pretty much the same, um, but because of the new tier set bonuses, I'm going to be doing all these talents assuming you have the four set for tier 20. With um, no longer getting extra mastery proc chance for flanking strike, Animal Instincts has actually dropped a little bit. Um, it's still viable to take it, but I do highly recommend taking Way of Machnathal if you can handle that in your rotation. Mortal Wounds has actually taken a pretty solid bump because of the way Lacerate now interacts with the tier 20 set. Previously, with, well, without any set bonuses, um, Mortal Wounds is pretty weak just because even with multiple targets, Lacerate isn't really worth it to spend the time putting on all the targets. It doesn't do enough damage and it costs too much focus and too many global cooldowns to justify putting Lacerate on every target to get the extra 2% chance for Mongoose Bites when that dot ticks. But because the new tier 20 uh, not only increases the damage that last rate does significantly. Um, it's also required for your mongoose bite. Like you gain 10% more damage when you mongoose bite targets that have last rate on it. And that pretty much puts last rate as almost number one priority to always have on the target because you're losing uh, that entire set bonus if you don't have last rate on your target. So on a lot of the AOE fights, you could take mortal wounds. I personally found the rotation got pretty complex when you're trying to weave in all those last rates and track them on all the targets. So I wouldn't recommend it for beginners, but I did find some DPS gain by using mortal wounds on the AOE fights over Snake Hunter. Murder of Crows, if you cannot effectively manage Snake Hunter or mortal wounds, and Snake Hunter is something that you have to really opportunize um, if you don't use it at the right times, you're not going to get as much benefit from it. So if you don't want to handle either of those, Murder of Crows is still very good for this row as well. So for single target, if you can't handle the other two, I do highly suggest Murder of Crows. Um, for fights with only single target and you're never multi-dotting with Lacerate, I don't suggest Mortal Wounds. Uh, the proc rate on it isn't very good. If there's ever a scenario where you can consistently have Lacerate on two or more targets, then uh, Mortal Wounds does start to compete with the other two. Third row still doesn't really matter for each fight. Uh, pretty much whatever you prefer. Just take it. It's not going to affect your damage that much. Uh, fourth row, again, Steel Trap for single target. Cal traps for AoE. Guerrilla Tactics still isn't worth taking. Uh, fifth row, again, doesn't really matter. Just a preference. Um, you might find some utility with Ranger's Net, but there's not many fights where you really need to kite things. So uh, you're probably not going to find much use for any of these talents for Tuma Sargeras. For the sixth row, uh, again, Serpent Sting for single target and Butchery for AoE. And there's a new legendary ring actually that makes this row pretty interesting. The legendary ring for survival allows you to always have the Serpent Sting talent, so you can actually have Butchery and Serpent Sting at the same time. The only problem with this is that Butchery doesn't 
give any benefit for single target. So um, for single target fights, this ring is basically useless. You could probably take Dragon's Fire Grenade with that for single target, and you might see um, a decent damage gain with that. Uh, I haven't seen too many people recommending the ring at all, though. Um, it's kind of a, it's like a middle tier legendary. Like, it's useful to have, but it's not as good as other ones, and I'll go over that later. And for the final tier, is pretty much always spinning Cobra still. The other two talents just don't quite compete as much. So what fights should you be taking the single target build? For single target, I recommend Goroth, Demonic Inquisition, unless your tanks are very effective at holding the two bosses together. Even then, it's only two targets, so AoE build isn't quite worth it for them. So I'm gonna say uh, single target build for Demonic Inquisition. For Harjitan, you definitely want the AoE build. For Mistress, again, you definitely want the AoE build. And then Sisters of the Moon, go ahead and swap back to your single target build. There is one part of the fight where there are two targets, and if your raid is doing very poorly, there could be three or more targets. Um, but I would still highly recommend single target because two just isn't quite enough to really warrant the AoE build. Uh, for Desolate Host, you could go either way with this fight. There are a lot of adds that spawn, but it's a very ad control fight where you might not want to be AoEing depending on the strategy your group is using to fight Desolate Host. So um, I'm going to say you could go single target or AoE build for Desolate Host and be effective either way. I personally recommend single target, but again, you could go either or for this one. Maiden of Vigilance, definitely single target. Fallen Avatar um, is another fight where, depending on your strategy, you might be cleaving onto the Maiden, but I would be surprised if that is uh, an effective strategy. And again, only two targets isn't quite enough to really warrant the AoE build, and you'll probably see more from the single target build. And Kill Jaden, again, this one does have some moments where there are multiple targets, however, they aren't up for a majority of the fight, so I would still recommend single target build for this one. I've included a list in the description of the video below that has my personal recommended best in slot list that I have um, simmed many times and found to be the, the most optimal build. However, this build does assume that you have full mythic gear. So if you want something maybe more translatable to like heroic or normal, um, you could probably just go with the Icy Veins build that I've also linked below that. Um, they're pretty similar. Just a couple minor differences, so um, the Icy Veins one is probably more recommended for general use, um, but again, you can use either one and you'll probably see uh, pretty good DPS with both. As for recommended legendaries, if any of them have changed, Call of the Wild is still pretty much the legendary that you want. Uh, these bracers reduce the cooldown of all of your aspects by 35%, and since our main DPS cooldown is an aspect, Aspect of the Eagle, this legendary is pretty much just the best all around for single target and AoE, just because of the substantial DPS gain you get from being able to use that cooldown more often. For a second single target legendary, I have shown the Unseen Predator's Cloak as being the most effective. However, Icy Veins lists this one as tier 3. I personally wonder if there's not a discrepancy in the Sims for that, so um, I recommend you kind of take it with a grain of salt. I don't personally have the Unseen Predator's Cloak yet, so I haven't been able to test it in a real environment. However, I have seen a lot of people using Safuza's Secret as um, their second single target legendary, even on fights where there isn't an ability or any situation that you can proc the ring. And for those of you who don't know, Sefuza's Secret has a passive effect and then an active effect. The passive increases movement speed by 10% and gives you 2% haste. So just flat out, the ring gives you a bunch of haste and a bunch of movement speed. Now, if you can, at any point in a fight, use a CC effect, interrupt or dispel anything, you increase that effect to 70% movement speed and 25% haste for 10 seconds. So any fight, and there's there's a number of fights in Tomb of Sargeras where you can interrupt, and there's even a couple of fights where you can just chuck out a freezing trap and freeze an ad, even if it gets broken instantly, you still gain that, that bonus from that ring. And that makes Safuza's Secret probably the best 
if not better than Call of the Wild for a lot of fights in Tomb of Sargeras. Um, a lot of people don't like Safuza Secret because it's typically considered low tier, but recent changes to a lot of the utility legendaries has brought Safuza's up to be pretty darn effective, even if you can't proc the effect on it. Um, just to give you some perspective, the ring itself, just at, uh, without any proc, it gives you 1,281 haste. It has a socket, so you can put another socket gem in there. So it's actually uh, 1,431 haste. And then it also gives you another 2% haste flat out. And it takes 750 haste to gain 1%. So that's another 1,500 haste on top of the 1,431 you're already getting. So it's just under 3,000 haste from one ring. You can look at your gear, that's that's almost worth two entire rings from one ring. Uh, so it's, it's pretty darn effective. And then if you can consistently proc that item on any fight, it's just even more batshit insane. The Sephusa Secret, I do highly recommend. If not for every boss fight, at least for the ones where you can proc it, even once or twice probably brings it up to be more valuable than any of the other ones. If you cannot get your hands on the Sephusas though, the next best I would recommend is either Unseen Predator's Cloak, Soul of the Huntmaster, or the Nesting Wary's Trapping Treads. And again, if you want to be able to look at any of the this information yourself. I have uh, Icy Veins link at the bottom underneath the best in slot list. You can see um, they have the legendaries listed in category of tiers of what ones that you want to wear the most. All right, and the final question some of you might be having is survival still good to play? How is it compared to the other two hunter specs? Marksman has actually been simulated as the top spec for this tier. For those of you who really like to min max and you just want to try and push numbers as high as you can go, survival's probably not the spec for you anymore. That said, survival's not in a bad place. I would personally rate it above Beast Mastery right now, but there's a lot of situations where Beast Mastery comes ahead, especially in the AoE fights. Um, survival's cleavability is kind of weak for this tier, just based on the nature of how the AoE happens. Like a lot of the fights are like loose, random, spread out adds a lot of the times, which means you can't effectively cleave them. So a lot of our AoE um, doesn't get its full potential. Marksman is mostly the best just because of its AoE is, in my opinion, extremely overtuned, but it, it's very effective and its single target right now is also in a pretty good place. If you're looking for being like the number one uh, Marksman is a pretty good place to go. I don't find it as rewarding personally. The rotation is a lot simpler. It has a very low skill ceiling and a pretty high skill floor. And I would personally say the same thing about Beast Mastery as well. Both of them do have their complexities. And if you have the legendaries for them, go for it. Um, but I am still personally sticking with survival because uh, I really enjoy the spec the rotation is very rewarding And it has a very high skill ceiling and I personally enjoy classes like that Anyways, if, if you have any questions or comments, please go ahead and leave them below uh, I try and get back to questions pretty quickly I check my comments almost daily and I will be sure to update the description below the video with any possible further changes that happen to survival hunter uh, in the coming weeks. Thanks for watching. Bye